Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Lisa Richardson. And I'm Will Wareham with WHHI TV. We're coming to you today from Spring Island. We're actually on the community dock here, one of the community docks along the Chichesse Creek and an absolutely gorgeous day. Absolutely. Joining us today, our first guest is Chris Marsh, the Executive Director of Spring Island Trust. We're also joined by John Strother, broker in charge for Spring Island Realty. So stick around for more 843 TV. Where communities come to speak. Eight four three TV, where Bluffton comes to speak, where Spring Island comes to speak, where Hilton Head Island comes to speak, where Beaufort comes to speak. Eight four three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to Eight four three TV. We're joined today by Chris Marsh, who's the Executive Director of the Spring Island Trust, and John Strother with Spring Island Realty. Thank you very much for joining us today. Great to be here. So we're here on a, uh, like a picture perfect day, um, at a community dock right along the Chichesse Creek, um, and uh, on Spring Island. And Chris, uh, you're with the, you're the Executive Director of the Spring Island Trust. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of, of what the Trust's primary role here is on, on Spring Island? Spring Island is unique in the fact that it has an environmental nonprofit, the Spring Island Trust, that actually owns the nature preserves and is also responsible for environmental stewardship of the island. Oh. We're also responsible for helping educate the members about their role as environmental stewards and, and really getting to learn about nature and all the great things about it. Yeah. Absolutely, and there's there's plenty of, of nature around. In fact, uh, uh, earlier I heard you re reference uh, the culture on Spring Island as a as a nature-based culture. Can you describe a little bit further about what you mean by that? Spring Island's one of those places that uh, people come, and if they fall in love with it, it turns out they share a lot with the other people that have that same affinity for nature. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you get a group of people with similar interest and similar values. And so one of the roles of the trust is really to help people understand what it means to, to live in harmony with nature here, to be good stewards uh, of the, the natural resources on this island. We've got 12 different types of habitats. We've just got a great variety of, of nature and nature experiences here. So that's our role is, is to help people embrace that and understand what their role is. No, absolutely. And I, I imagine, John, when, when people first come to the island, that's one of the first things that they've got to recognize, right? Well, you do. You can't miss it. When you, when you come on, it's, you either love it or hate it, one of the two. <laughs> right. It's like, wow, it's <laughs> this overwhelming nature, unbridled. Yes. And I mean, I mean, what do you what do y'all do with? Um, I mean, how, do people just come here and buy, or do you uh, get people involved with the different nature programs that y'all do? Can you talk about some of those? Sure. One of the things that's important is for people who are coming here as prospects is to understand what it means to live on an island where nature is part of the culture, and so uh, we take people out and basically show them how to look at nature mm -hmm. and all the great opportunities and to take them out, whether it's kayaking, whether it's one of our hay wagon rides, but to show them great horned owls on the nest or we've got four bald eagle nest here and really show them the opportunities and to help them understand that when you live on an island like this, you have a role to, to be a steward of nature on your property. So this is not a place where you come and clean your lot and just put up something that would look like it was any other development. Right. You've really got to embrace the part of the island that you own and, and help take care of it. Well, Chris, it, like we've been saying, it's absolutely gorgeous. Driving in here is beautiful, very natural. Tell us about how many, how many residents are there? How many home sites, first of all? There are 400 home sites. Okay. And right now there's 260 homes that have been constructed on the island. Uh, about 200 of those home sites have families that are here for more than half the year or for the full year. And so it's a very stable community. This is uh, the primary residence for many people. And so there's a lot of expectations. This is where they spend their time. Okay, and so what are some of the things that they can do to be part of the community? Because it is a little secluded, they have great lots, a lot of nature, but at the same time, community is a big focus. What are some of the things you all do to promote that? Or 
Spring Island is one of those places where people sometimes come on the island, they go, there's nobody here, but yet we'll have a social function in the evening, and we'll have 150 people. <laughs> and so uh, it can be deceptive to you. Uh, one of the things the Trust does is that we sponsor a seminar series on Thursday evenings, we call them the Trust Talks. And we usually have anywhere from 60 to 125 people at these talks. We bring in scientists and artists and historians from our connections throughout much of the eastern United States. And so people get together for social time. And part of what we're doing is we're maintaining a, a, an intellectually stimulating place to be. Sure. And so that's one of our roles of the trust. Uh, we also have regularly scheduled nature programs uh, as well. And uh, we have a sister nonprofit called the Low Country Institute that uh, promotes the same sort of values and philosophies, but it's for the area at large. And the Master Naturalist program that we do through the Low Country Institute is a key part of the environment uh, here in terms of what people want to participate in. And so they learn a lot about living with nature here. Well, they, um the Master Naturalist program, that's done in cooperation with Clemson, isn't it? That's correct. And, um, well, what, I met a guy, he said he made like 250 bluebird houses. I mean, <laughs> and, and y'all have a program where they report to Cornell. I mean, what kind of programs do y'all have like that? One of what the things that? about, <laughs> about Spring Island is, is it's very different. Uh, but when you come here, there are so many volunteer opportunities. Uh, the best way to learn about something is to actually participate in it. Mm -hmm. So the Bluebird uh, nest building program started with 60 Bluebird boxes uh, back in the 1990s. And as people learned about them, they wanted to, to come and help more. So uh, they check a Bluebird boxes once a week uh, during the whole season. And people, f by being that close, really get a chance to learn the cycle of nature, watch the babies grow up, mm -hmm. see what happens to that box. And for many people, it's a very simple way to go from not knowing anything about nature to becoming a sort of an expert on one thing. And people really enjoy that. All the data goes into the Cornell Lab, so it becomes part of a national database. And I believe we have the largest bluebird database for any community in the country wow. with Cornell. Yeah. So, wow. so uh, it's, it's a win-win, and people get to share their stories uh, as well. But we have a lot of other volunteer opportunities as well, monitoring uh, wood duck boxes. We do surveys uh, for birds. We actually, um, people learn about surveying alligators at night. We, have, uh, we condition our alligators so they avoid people. We have two DNR biologists, that retired biologists actually, that work with us. And so we, we, in a very controlled way, we have opportunities for people to be engaged in the study of nature, mm -hmm. as well as just being observers. Chris, that's very educational and certainly very interesting. Uh, stay right with us. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more 843 TV.